Now to make our jalapeno, or as some would have it, capsamel wine, we will be using the following. I've got eight jalapeno peppers. You can add as many as 16 if you want it a little bit more spicy. I'm going to have four and a half cups at the ready. Not quite sure how much of this I'm going to use until I've taken my initial hydrometer reading, but I know I'm going to need at least four and a half cups. I need one pound, or in this case 15 ounces, of seedless golden raisins. We'll need the juice of one quarter of a lemon, and that's going to act as our acid blend substitute, which will add a little brightness to the wine, a little bit of acidity. We need one black tea bag, and that's going to act as our tannin substitute. That's going to provide a little bit of a stringency on, our, on, on the back end of our wine. This time around, I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Blanc wine yeast. And the reason for this choice is that it has a higher 18% ABV, alcohol by volume tolerance. Hey, if I'm going to make something that's hot and spicy, I might as well make it with a little bit of a kick. Now, if you don't have that, this still works. Now, we're going to use a half a teaspoon of original active dry yeast to act as our yeast nutrient. Turns out that regular wine yeast will feed upon the dead carcasses of the bread yeast and uh, makes a better in, in, in result wine. We need to have at least one gallon of filtered water ready. We won't be using all of that because the sugar that we need to dissolve in that water later on is going to take up some of the volume, but at least have one gallon ready. We're going to need at least one straining bag. Since we'll be dealing with fresh peppers, we need something to put them in during primary fermentation, so one straining bag will do. Now, because we are dealing with straining bags, we need a fermenter with a wide mouth opening so we can get our straining bag into. After about a week of sitting in our primary fermenter, we eventually want to transfer everything over into our secondary carboy for the long haul fermentation process. And again, it doesn't require a wide mouth opening, just a narrow opening will do. That having been said, we are going to need an airlock with bong. Bong. <laughs> that will fit into our carboy to allow CO2 gases to escape and keep the bugs from getting in. I should point out that our primary fermenter does have a built-in airlock. So if yours doesn't, then you'll need an airlock for your primary fermenter as well. It would be helpful if you have a hydrometer testing tube to determine what our final alcohol by volume content is going to be. It's optional, but it's nice to have. Now, one thing that you do not see here is that eight quart pot, because I don't have the space in this frame to include it, that we'll be using shortly to help kill the bacteria and any wild yeast that might be on our peppers. And once again, as I'm fond of saying, last but certainly not least, is a food grade sanitizer to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized, whether it be Wild Steps, Darsan, or something equivalent. That is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. All right, let's start out by removing the seeds from our jalapenos. Go ahead and remove the upper part and let's do a slice in half. And what we need to do now is to remove these seeds. Now if you want your wine hotter, you can go ahead and heat the seeds in. But for this time around, we're just going to go ahead and remove them. And once the seeds have been removed, and some of the stem in the side. We can go ahead and finely chop our peppers. Now, if you happen to have a food processor, go for it. But we just want to finely chop. And let's go ahead and get that into a straining bag. Well, let's start with the rest of them. All 
All right, let's move on to those raisins. Now with the raisins, I'm going to just give those a rough chop. If your straining bag is a little bit on the small side, like mine are, we want to use a second straining bag. And let's get those in the bag. All right, let's go ahead and tie off our bags. And let's move on to the kitchen. All right, since we're going to be putting in four and a half cups of sugar, and we're making roughly a one gallon batch, I'm going to go ahead and pour off about four cups of our water. And the remainder, we can go ahead and put it in the pot. Put our lid back on, and let's bring that up to a boil. All right, now that our water has come to a good rolling boil, we can go ahead and incorporate our sugar. Get that all nice and dissolved. Won't take but a, a few, few seconds. We're gonna go ahead and, since our water is still nice and hot, add in our half a teaspoon of bread yeast slash each nutrient substitute. And while we're at it, we can drop in our black tea bag slash tannin substitute. We can now turn off the heat. And we can drop in our peppers and our raisins. Go ahead and put our lid back on and wait for that to come down to room temperature. Now again, the water that we poured off, uh, when we transfer all of our liquid into our carboy, we'll bring it, we will bring it up to the one gallon measure, and if necessary, any additional water that we need to add, we'll go ahead and bring it up, bring it to level. So again, let's just wait for this to come down to room temperature. All right, I've taken the opportunity to pour the juice from the pot into our carboy. Then, using the remaining, some of the remaining water that we had set aside earlier, I brought the juice level up to the one gallon mark. Then I added our straining bags. And now I'm going to add the juice of one quarter of a lemon. And using a strainer, trying to ensure that I don't get any seeds in there. I mean, you just, just need to squeeze it. You don't need to scrape off the sides or anything. You don't need to ream it or anything. But that's more than enough to get the job done. Now that we've got all our liquids in place, it's now time to do a hydrometer reading for those of you who have hydrometers. My reading came in at 1.112. They're high. It kind of tells me that it's either going to be a very potent wine in terms of ABV, alcohol by volume, or it's going to be a sweet wine. Time will tell on that. All right, now that using a freshly sanitized spoon, I'm going to go ahead and give our used one last good vigorous stir. Leaving it for that is that we want to try and give our yeast to be added momentarily a little bit more oxygen to work with every smisher way. All right. More is better, but that will do for now. Following that, we want to add in our quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. You can add more if you like, but I find that a quarter of a teaspoon will get the job done eventually. I'm going to spread it around. 
And because some of us sitting on those string bags, I want to go ahead and just incorporate that a little bit. I mean, if you want to hydrate your yeast beforehand, you can go ahead and do that as well. But for me, this method does work, and that's the method that I use. Go ahead and put our lid back on, nice and tight. And once again, I should point out this high fermenter does have the built in airlock, which is the red thing right here. Yours doesn't have it, but you need to use a regular airlock. Okay, it's now time to label our creation. We are making, get this on con straight, a jalapeno wine. We started it on this date. And our original gravity or starting gravity, me, our original gravity or starting gravity was 1.112. All right, this gets the process started, but there's still quite a few things that need to be done following this over the course of the next year. We're going to let the uh, jalapeno peppers and raisins, we're going to let those set in the primary fermenter for a good five to seven days. Uh, after which we'll have removed those and we will transfer our wort or wine to be into our secondary carboid for the longer haul. And then periodically every six or eight weeks or so, we'll, we'll continue to do the process of racking or transferring one carboy to another until the wine has either become clear or it's to our liking in terms of taste. I usually wait about two, eight or nine months before I bottle and that whole process involves decassing, back sweetening, pasteurization, then the whole bottling process of putting them in bottles, corking them, labeling them. It's a fairly involved process from time to time, but there we go. This is the initial process of getting a jalapeno wine started. Uh, there will be a part two video when I do the tasting in one year's time. So until then, uh, click on that subscribe notify button and, uh, and I will see you then. All right, it's been one year. Actually, it's more like 53 weeks since we first started making our jalapeno wine. Uh, I have not, as of yet, had the opportunity to uh, cork uh, these bottles, nor have I had the opportunity to label these bottles because they were just uh, they were just pasteurized, except for this one, uh, earlier this morning. Uh, they're still lukewarm, okay? They haven't actually come down to... Uh, to really room temperature yet, so I can't, uh, I can, but I'm going to wait till they cool down before I label them and cork them and put them away. Um, uh, until then, uh, again, if you uh, are interested in pasteurization of your wine, you don't try to eliminate the, the use of sulfites or reduce it as much as possible, I do have a video on pasteurization, a uh, pretty simple, straightforward process. Uh, you lose a little bit of uh, flavor, uh, but really not that much. Uh, so again, we're going to go ahead and uh, open this one up and see what we got. Oh, uh, a couple of other things before I pour the glass. Um, let's see. Of note, uh, this uh, came in at, look at my little crib notes here. This one came in at 16.01% uh, ABV. Uh, it went down to 0 0.990. Uh, it was back sweetened. For those who you who are curious about back sweetening, there is a video on that, by the way. Uh, to a level of 1.022. It's not really dessert sweet or real sweet, kind of sweet, but sweet enough to my taste. Uh, that having been said, uh, all I can say is that uh, with the exception of this one bottle, the remaining four have been pasteurized. Now, crack open my bottle real quick. In the interest of fair disclosure, in the process of back sweetening it, yes, I did taste it to find out what it was going to taste like at varying levels of sweetness. So it's not like I'm tasting this for the first time or something that I tasted weeks ago and I have no idea what it tasted like when I do the video. So with that having been said, uh, it came in fairly clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, kind of happy about that. Uh, that having been said, again, on the nose, you can actually get a whiff of the jalapeno flavor. 
followed by that alcohol at 16 <laughs> percent um The flavor is slightly reminiscent, that's right, reminiscent, of um, jalapenos. But more importantly, what you're really getting is some of the heat. A fair amount of heat. I mean, it's not like hot, okay? It's not like really spicy hot. I don't know if I guess him. Had to put it on a scale of uh, zero to uh, ten. I would say, in terms of heat, we're looking at a three-ish <laughs> sort of love, uh, heat, heat level. Uh, it's not overly spicy, but it is. It is a bit spicy. The next thing you get, although that heat level is kind of building up at the back of the tongue, the next thing you get. There's a fairly dry taste to it. I mean, it's sweet, but it has kind of like a dry overall effect to it. Kind of like it's drying out your mouth a bit. But I was kind of surprised. I mean, a jalapeno wine. I mean, yeah, I do some pretty odd things on this channel. And uh, I put this in that kind of a category as far as my taste buds are concerned. I was kind of surprised that it actually doesn't taste bad, quite frankly. Um... Yeah, it actually tastes bad. That heat does kind of build up. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen if I have a full glass of this. Uh, again, to repeat, 16% alcohol, fair amount of heat. I guess if you wanted to add more jalapenos, you can get a lot more heat flavor out of it. But first time trying it, I'm trying to be a bit conservative. Uh, it's actually not bad. Yeah, it's actually not bad. But okay, keeping the tasting portion of this as short as possible. Um, again, would I make this again at some point? when I finally do get to retire for good, uh, I probably would. Wouldn't mind having a few of these bottles around just to have on hand. Uh, something for the guests to enjoy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so if you like what you see here, normally I would say click on that like and subscribe button, but again, uh, I am in the process of winding this channel down. i got to take count. I think I've got like 10 or 11 uh, batches that I still have to do one year tastings on. And then after that, I think I'm done. But that won't be until later later this year. So again, if you like what you see here, while I'm still here, click on that like and subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, which ought to be sometime next week because i got another batch of that honey bear mead sitting over there. Uh, that was one I took uh, what I considered to be some of the cheapest honey I could find. The little honey that comes in those uh, little honey bear small containers. Uh, I decided to make a mead out of that just to see what would happen. So that will be the next video. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.